What's up guys and thanks for tuning in. As you can see, we've got Titus and Kong ready to make its way down the highway to Pecos, New Mexico. Stick around, it's gonna be a good time. finally made it to camp it's uh 12 23 um both bridges into the road that we were going to take into the santa fe national forest were down due to closures for bridges so the first one i came to um was down to a bridge so they sent me to another one where you did a turnaround and came back towards that same trail guess what it was down due to a bridge as well so we ended up going part of the enchanted rockings trail and i don't know if you guys have known or been to this one that's close to Pecos, but it's full rock um, and rock crawling. And so rock crawling at night with a two-year-old baby that was dead tired, a dog that was done with being inside and a mama that was uh, ready to be in bed. Um, it was challenging. And then to get here, I'm super proud of Titus. The 37s did great. They're the Mickey Thompson Baja bosses. And I've run them before on one of my uh, trips that you guys saw and 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 you know that they, they they just they just handle well they really do on rock and dirt and um everything we've thrown at them but you know the course the mile stars are still on that uh trailer and they're aired down to about 18 and they really perform well um and so i'm happy with them as well but i am dead beat guys uh just is just a quick preview of what the camp looks like right now and uh it's probably 60-ish right now. Um, so we plan to sleep well and catch up with you guys in the morning. We woke up to you guys. Last night, due to everything going on and all the reroutes, we ended up on the uh, Enchanted Rockies Trail. And uh, needless to say, this part is pretty s significantly rocky. I mean, that's one piece right there. Um, but you can tell by the color of the road, I mean, pretty much it's all that slow going the entire time, but we are super happy to see that. And this is only the beginning. And of course, <laughs> she's already playing and we're getting coffee going. So 
the first thing we have to do is traverse that big ledge right there. <laughs> and from what I can tell, it's about three and a half feet tall. And obviously, this trailer and all of us are going to have to go up it. So, we're going to get some coffee going, some breakfast, and then uh, we'll catch you guys on the trail. That people's is egg whites, spinach, and a little bit of pico. Sounds fantastic to me. Oh baby, listen to that crispy crickle crackle of the bacon. The Lord's chips. I really think times like this are just to sit back and enjoy what you are given every day. And the fact that we actually get to do this in this type of environment. I mean, if you look around, look what I'm looking at. It's so much better than looking at your neighbors across the street or another work day. It doesn't really matter what it is. It's just nice to get away. This house is all in secret. Got my chains behind the door. And a coffee can throw my knuckles on just in case. I will go if you ask me to, and I will stay if you dare. If I go, I'm gone shameless. Am I? This house is a quiet talker, it's a creek sound walker, it's a kitchen chair, and the photographs know I'm a liar, and they just laugh as they burn.
old house she's quite the keeper quite the keeper If I go, I'm going crazy. Let my dogs take me. I wanted to kind of show you guys how we got into this predicament on this trail. If you look at the map, you can see where the original shell was in yellow, and you can see coming up when we were making a left. Well, a mile down that road, a bridge was out in that first red circle. So what we ended up having to do is go all the way around, back up to Sands, and come back. Well, we ended up doing the reroute and came back in that trail probably another two miles on that road, and sure enough, ran into a bridge that was condemned or being uh, replaced and under construction as well. So that's how we got on this trail, which is in blue, marked to the left. And boy, was it a doozy at 11 o'clock at night. At this point... They were kind of playing around in camp, but it was time for us to get moving. So we packed up and got ready for the trail. Oh boy. So as you can see, this is like offset rollers and it was actually crazy. Unfortunately, I had to zoom in enough to where you guys could kind of see at least what was going on, but it was full articulation left to right from when the Jeff, when the Jeep would be going left, the trailer would be going right. 
And I mean, it was enough to stuff the tires on both of them. And, and in the end of this picture, uh, you'll see where you see the rollers and they were pretty significant. And again, usually I don't, you know, worry about hammering through things, but this was enough that it was twisting left to right severe enough that it was causing a lot of static against the trailer and the Jeep. So again, just one of those things that proves that this trailer will really follow the Jeep wherever you point it. you guys up we got about 35 miles down the trail and we ran into an issue so as you can see we're kind of set up on the trail but what happened was just around this corner um, just around this corner it basically goes vertical and we had noticed that we lost uh, the use of our lockers and sway bar well I don't know if you can really tell what it looks like but it's just shell and dragging this big trailer up a 24 percent grade in shell without lockers is almost impossible um all it keeps doing is blowing the tires off of it uh we can't ever get any traction to keep moving and there's a quick curve going up to the face of the steep area so you can't even get speed to go through it so um i'm gonna have to reroute unfortunately so I guess basically what we're gonna do is takes out some of these little saplings right here so I can spin around kind of come through here and make a turn up in this area and then back down the trail it's kind of unfortunate it's either one of the things you have to deal with when you do uh, gears on a Jeep and I just had the Jeep uh, gears done you know around six or seven hundred miles ago 
but what happens is metal shavings gets on the magnet that has to do with I guess the reluctor ring and the locker itself and will not allow it to work so unfortunately I checked the plugs the electronic side of it and that's exactly what's going on I'm guessing we spoke to a mechanic that actually did the gears and he said yeah it's just definitely most likely going to be a magnet issue best thing about it is look where we're at it's cool like 75 degrees we're like 8500 feet of altitude so it's not all that bad so I guess I'll get turned around and see you guys shortly. Guys, don't hate on me. I definitely, I'm totally clean, new shirt. Um, I'm dressed completely. Um, but, and yes, I'm saying um, the reason why is because we had a long day on the trail, guys. Uh, we ended up on a part of the Enchanted Rockies Trail because of two bridge closures. That part of the trail is incredibly rocky. I've got a two year old with me. Um, of course, I've got Kong with me, and both my lockers are out. I have no front or rear lockers, nor does it tell me when I'm engaged in four-wheel high or four-wheel low, or even in two-wheel high. So, it's been a day. Um, we got to a point that was a ridiculous, ridiculous climb, and we just kept digging. Even the Mickeys, the Mickey Stickies, even as sticky as the Mickeys are, they kept digging. So... I had to basically like break down and do the, the overlanding, create a trail UE um, technique. And so I broke out the chainsaw, cut a little bit of the old dead sapling stuff down. You can see a lot of this stuff behind me is burnt. They had a fire a few years ago, still recovering, but I had to cut a lot of that down and just to be able to give me enough re uh, room to get up and turn this big rig around and go back. Well, before that we had talked to mechanic and he was thinking that I needed to check the connectors on the rear diff because I just had the gears put in the 456s about 600 miles ago, 700 miles ago. Well, um, there's a ring in there that's magnetic that collects mag uh, metal shavings. And when it does, uh, it doesn't want to work and it freaks out the four wheel drive system. So he believes that's what happened. But he also said, hey, check that rear connector on that diff because I believe it could be faulty as well. So I did what in it, uh, left my tools sitting on the battery setup on Kong, and I guess I just started driving the trail and left them there. So again, long day. So when we got to camp, basically what they did is we got the baby out, we got the mountain bikes out, we took a ride, we relaxed, uh, we took a shower, um, as you can see, it's right there behind me along the side of the Kong. And we basically just freshened up and restarted. And what we did, it made a huge difference. Um, we're now about to cook dinner. Uh, Brielle's actually taking a nap right now. It's super cool right now. The wind's blowing, you can hear it. Um, we're about 8,500 foot. It's supposed to rain tonight, not sure that it will. But I guess that tomorrow, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and pull a Yui and head out of here down the mountain and see if we can't go ahead and locate the tools. Now, this is not a super popular route because it's it's pretty hard going, 
but there is a shortcut to come this way and we've seen three rigs come through this this uh same path uh in the last hour so i doubt they saw what i did because i came from the far east side by barilla peak and barilla peak is is a pretty nasty rock section from start to finish it, it, it's never easy so a lot of people try to avoid that section come this way and go through the national forest but i guess what we're going to do is tomorrow we're going to turn around um in the morning head back over there and see if we can't find that bag of tools uh, i have an 800 dollars fluke meter in there that i'm just not willing to part with and of course the missus is not willing to allow me to have this happen either so uh, she's on board and i guess what we're going to do is basically um pick up in the morning on the trail as far as the trail goes and head back that way now as far as today uh, this campsite is courtesy of lifestyle overland um and i dig it i really do it's a really nice one like i said at the top of the santa fe national forest um this is on the side on the west side where some of the stuff got burnt and some of the stuff didn't so it's hit or miss but this is beautiful up here and so i couldn't ask for more that being said even though i had no lockers and i was pulling that trailer we made it up some ridiculous rock sections and so I can at least say that. So, 456s, they work for crawling too. Stay tuned. I wanted to give you guys a quick look at the setup. It's, uh, Kevin from Lifestyle Overland said that this was a large area, and it is, it's a very large area. Nice firing. And again, at the time we pulled in, we wanted to basically set up and relax. And so you see Titus is open, uh, the awnings are out, Brielle's in the camper right now sleeping. Uh, we've got the shower tent out. And this is that G for free. It's huge. If you haven't checked the shower tent out, do me a favor, check it out. You won't find one as good as this, cheaper. You will not. And it is huge. If you can see it, it's probably three and a half foot across at the top in the shoulder area and even bigger at the bottom and two adults can shower easily one adult large adult you know over six feet can easily shower in this thing easily um other than that we are just kind of starting everything and we'll we'll get the uh galley <laughs> running here pretty soon i do know we have some of that for dinner tonight but anyway take a look enjoy and I'll catch up to you soon. Hey guys, check it out. Well, you know me, vegetables, more vegetables, but then look at this. Oh. <laughs> yes, so that right there, and you can't see it because it's cleared up, but that is some fajita meat going down. Let me clean you guys up a little bit. Oh, now check it out. Hey, give me a minute, I'll have the chicken on. Oh, baby. Let's take you in for a look. Let's take a look at that. Look at that shit. Look at that baby Scottle doing work. Come on, guys. Like, what are you doing? Look at this. Baby Scottle is doing work. That poor dog, man. Oh, baby. Baby Scottle. Who lost another one? We got a bunch of ninja chicken. And come back with one more spice. That's that paprika. Yes, honey. Boom. What's up, guys? 
You see I'm wearing a hoodie. Uh, it's the beginning of July. We're here um, around Pecos, New Mexico, or just east of Santa Fe, about 50 miles. And we're at about 8,500 foot, and right now it's cold. I've got a hoodie on, and I'm the guy that sweats incessantly all the time for no reason. I don't have to do anything to sweat. I just generally sweat. But <clears throat> we have the forest to ourselves, so I went ahead and cranked up the generator. That's that win, uh, win W-E-N, 4,000 that I got. It's on eco mode right now. It's running uh, the solar, solar charger inverter. Uh, at the same time, it's running the AC unit. Um, we just got it on low heat. Um, and then the TV and, and a few amenities while the girls kind of relax and get ready for bed and, and uh, just top off the batteries while we're here. Generally, we don't do it because we use solar and, and the trailer to top the batteries off while we're driving or while it's sitting here. But since we had time and I figured it was new, why not? So we did that. And uh, anyway, I'm making uh, nighttime decaf coffee and, and, and just enjoying this. I just, I chose to do the dishes tonight and cook so I could be out in it and it's beautiful. Again, the guys from Lifestyle Overland pick some good routes and, and some good camp places and, and this is definitely a good campsite. So anyway, I wanted to say good night. Thanks for watching and I'll check you guys in the morning. Morning guys. Sunday morning, last day. We were up early, probably 6.30. Um, ran no AC, ran no heater last night. Got down to about 52. So with the windows in the camper and the little fan on, it was fantastic. And now, we get to listen to this. The wind in the trees. Ah, I'm sure you can see them moving. Just listen to that. Anyway, I'm going to get some coffee on and start packing up and get ready to go on this trail. We are actually going to retract this trail today, which is going to be rough, but we're going to retract it in hopes that I find my tool bag. Fingers crossed, guys. See you soon. Yes. Cleaned up, picked up, camps put up. It's about an hour cleanup process, but I'm particular about how I put it together. But anyway, um, we are going to go ahead and try to backtrack and hope that that bag of tools is there. We've seen a couple other trucks go through and it's periodically uh, sprinkling, which worries me without lockers going through some of that stuff, but I guess, uh, we'll see how bad it is when we get back there. We are deciding not to go back to them. That trail was pretty ridiculous without lockers and all the rocks and it is raining to beat the band right now. So. I'm not going to chance it with my family uh, in the Jeep. I mean, it's just tools. I can recoup them, so I guess that's what we'll do. side on the slide out and uh, so it's under a bunch of stuff so right now I'm just kind of sitting on the side of the road
showing the slight drizzle cool temperatures it says it's about 48 but anyway i wanted to conclude this video uh as far as this section of it now coming out this road all the way across uh towards pecos once you clear uh the national forest area now there's several other places you can still camp along that same road and i'll go ahead and add it in the video so you'll kind of see what i'm talking about with some b-roll footage you get on a road that's somewhat gravel somewhat asphalt uh, and it's probably a 35 minute drive from all the way across in the mountains out uh, also it's a pretty dangerous road uh, even in these conditions so imagine uh, during the winter i'm betting they close those passes off so if you come from the south side of the enchanted rocky trail you're probably not going to get out of these trails coming this way you'd probably have to at least continue on through barilla peak um, or probably be turned around because um, i don't think once you get through there, they don't have those passes open. There's several gate sections because there's a lot of steep uh, and vertical uh, descents and climbs. So I can imagine even in ice, it would probably you know, be impassable, to be honest. Um, and I'll push this thing pretty hard, and I drive pretty hard, but there's no way I'd do that uh, road in the winter. L unfortunately, lots of crosses on it to see the people that it passed. So anyway, thanks for watching and enjoy the B-roll.